Happy Wednesday, everyone. John Lorden here with another Brain Scratch Searchlight update. This is one that you might say, John, we've already covered the update on this. We know that Holly Ellsworth Clark, her body was found. Um, however, in a lot of these cases, you'll have the family struggling to come to grips or come to terms with the conditions around their the loss of their loved one. And in this particular story, there's a, a bit of an interesting outcome that the family has reached that I'm really thankful for in one way. It's absolutely heartbreaking, but I'm really thankful that they feel like they have some type of definitive answer. And I just wanted to kind of close it out in terms of Holly's story altogether. Um, in a few weeks, I will probably go ahead and um, deactivate Holly's videos from the channel as well. But I just wanted to let you guys know kind of where this all ultimately landed in particular for the family, because they were taking extra steps on this case as well. So this is the Searchlight title card for Holly Ellsworth Clark, missing from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, January 11th, 2020. Feels like it was a whole different world back at that point. Um, over at the Calgary Herald on September 10th, 2020, uh, they gave us the update about the finding of Holly. Ellsworth Clark, 27, went missing from her home in Hamilton, Ontario in January. Her body had been found in the Hamilton Harbor. And you might remember, I actually included a little picture here. They had footage of her walking in the town. It looks like she was walking towards the pier area. Um, but interestingly, she was carrying what looked like a, a black garbage bag almost that looked like it had something in it. And if I recall correctly, some of the later footage, she doesn't have that bag. So still a little bit of a question for me in terms of the bag. Maybe this information will help us make some sense out of that. Investigators said the cause uh, the death is not suspicious in nature and are closing the months long case. So that wasn't quite the end of it. Then a few weeks after that, uh, over at cbc.ca, we got this update. The family has second autopsy performed on Holly Ellsworth Clark as they question how she died. Uh, the body of Holly Ellsworth Clark has undergone a second autopsy and her family may hire a dive team to secure or to search Hamilton Harbor. Um, I really appreciate that we essentially had another doctor step up and say, I'd be willing to do another autopsy on Holly. And I don't believe he charged the family at all. Um, I really appreciate that. I, I really wish that we had more professional services offered to families that are in needs like this uh, at no cost. But we can see her family was really struggling. It's a distraction and I'm upset to have gone down a rabbit hole with my own thoughts, Dave Clark, Holly's father said. Obviously, he's struggling with all these questions, and despite the fact that you have the police saying, hey, look, there's nothing suspicious about this, from what I understand, they didn't really find any trauma uh, to her body that made it look like she was attacked. However, when they did find her body, it wasn't complete. Her legs, in particular, were missing, so I think that might be part of them thinking about maybe we should send divers in, maybe there's more items in there that can help us understand this better. Uh, please say the initial coroner's review by Dr. Judy Baird suggested nothing about Holly's death appeared to be suspicious. The forensic toxicologist report will be ready in a month. So obviously another important component to understanding everything here. Holly's family has hesitated ruling out foul play after she told them she was afraid for her life leading up to the day she went missing. But after Clark spoke with the coroner, her father, uh, he said that he had questions about the initial autopsy. And at least in this article, uh, the main thing is certainly about with that much of her missing, can we really rule out anything? And her friend and former boss, Elle McPherson, is here also saying, you know, uh, almost all of Holly's case file is currently listed as undetermined. So that isn't necessarily a real solid thing for especially for family and friends to come to some type of understanding about what's happened with the case. It does certainly leave a lot of questions, and I think you can understand why they're taking these extra steps. Uh, and I just want to say, once again, just uh, thank you to Dr. Michael Planin, who is the uh, chief forensic pathologist that was overseeing the second autopsy. 
the urge to keep searching for answers is hard to shake. Clark and McPherson said their regular drives in Hamilton while looking for Holly, they were developing an instinct to scope out anything that could lead them to her. And now he's saying your body is extin instinctively doing that, but now because she's been found, your brain says, shut up. So obviously we're talking about deep emotional trauma that they're going through, a pattern that they had set up for trying to cope with that trauma in some way, the act of search of looking for Holly. And now you get to the point where that isn't a component that um, can give them any sort of relief in terms of them helping to progress things for Holly or feel like they're getting closer to, to answers. So obviously just a really, really tough place for a family to be in. But then this article came out just a few weeks ago. Family accepts Holly Ellsworth Clark's death, most likely an accident, after review of autopsy. So we had the second autopsy come out. We had the toxicology results come out. And some other interesting information that it seems like the family might know about a coping mechanism that Holly used to get through some tough times. In a Facebook post. Dave Clark says a report from Ontario's chief pathologist revealed at the time of his daughter's death, she was not suffering from trauma or any effects from drugs or prescribed medications. We believe now that her death was most likely an accident brought on by part of an effort to heal herself, her father said. Holly was not fearless, but was extremely brave, and she had recently been known to take part in cold plunges in glacial water. So uh, the first thing I thought of with this is I know there's a group, I think they're, are they called the, it's, there's a polar bear plunge, if I recall correctly, but I think that's almost more of like a thrill seeking aspect. I just ran a quick search to try to understand uh, wellness benefits. And over here at wellin5.ca, Studies have looked at the benefits of cold water immersion on mental health. While researchers are quick to clarify that the scientific evidence is still limited, there are countless anecdotal accounts of cold water immersion improving symptoms of anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. And obviously, if you recall the information that we shared about this case earlier, uh, symptoms of anxiety, certainly. Symptoms of depression, possibly, but really the anxiety thing stands out in terms of the public information that came out. She was obviously dealing with some anxiety. She was afraid for her life up to some point. Um, so yeah, I guess this is a way that she was thinking about possibly trying to deal with some of these tough feelings. In the UK, there is a club of cold water swimmers who plunge year round on the west coast of BC, there are a group of people who, for varying health reasons, submit themselves to a weekly cold swim and hold this ritual accountable for improvements in mood and overall health. So in Canada in particular, there does seem to be um, people that are, are doing this. There's, there's a group that's doing this. Now, I don't know if she's necessarily associated with that group, but um, it, it's certainly something it, it took me no time at all to look into this and to find some form of connection there. And I'm sure her family would have possibly heard or speak about these benefits or doing this type of thing in the past. Now, back to that question about the black bag that she had with her. First thing that just kind of went through my mind is if she is taking this walk with the intent of going and doing this glacial plunge, you know, throwing herself into frigid cold water um, to help her mental state, bring, maybe bring her more aware of what's currently going on, shock her system in some way to kind of get her out of this anxiety loop or something like that. Was it possible that what was ever in this bag was part of that? Could it have been clothing for her to change into, or maybe clothing, uh, that she used for the actual jump? Uh, you know, I don't know, like a wetsuit that you would put on or something of, of that nature would kind of make sense if it was something that she would expect to get wet and she was going to take it back home that you might actually use a trash bag for transporting something like that rather than a gym bag or, or something along those lines. Um, but I'm still curious because I, if I recall correctly, that bag disappears somewhere in the video uh, where she's walking. So I'm not 100% sure on it, but it's possible that this could have been some item or maybe a change of clothes or, or something for her. She might have taken a plunge to attempt to clear her tumultuous mind, said her father. 
Clark thanked all those volunteers who participated in intensive searches over several months across Ontario. Honestly, the support around this case, um, there was so many people that were moved by it, motivated by it. And uh, it, it's heartbreaking that we have the outcome that we did in this case. But in a way, it's a little enlightening or uplifting that more people got to know about Holly, more people had discussions about issues like this, you know, struggling artists that are dealing with very tough things in their life. Um, so in a way, I think it started a lot of very good conversation, hopefully for, for people to maybe avoid a, a tragedy of this nature or understand what they're going through even better. Across the country and worldwide, we asked thousands of people that we didn't know for their interest and their help. And for the most part, it was graciously given, her father said. If that was you, thank you. This was a huge collective effort. So it's not very often, and that's why I just wanted to share this moment with you guys, that we actually have what feels like uh, some form or sense of closure. And I know people really debate using that word in a case like this. But I mean, from the family's perspective of being hurt, having these large open wounds and numerous questions and seeing them actually move to a point where they know they're not going to have all the answers for all of those questions, but it seems like they're pretty content in the most important of those questions, which is what actually happened to Holly. So you guys have any thoughts on this? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. I re I'd really uh, appreciate some more insight on this. Take care. I'll see you again on Friday with a brand new mystery for you right here on the Lord and Arts channel. <laughs>